Here's a fun project for a gemstone or a bead that has a drilled hole. So get some 0.8 or 20 gauge wire and thread it through the bead or the gemstone. And using your round nosed pliers, create a link at one end. Make sure it's not too small, that link. Then cut it off the spool and using your round nose pliers again, create a link at the opposite end. Um, if, the, if you've taken a bit too much wire, just snip off a little bit because you want the links to be roughly the same size. And make sure that those links are in the, on the same plane or running in the same direction. Now take your stake or your steel block and just gently hammer the ends. Be careful not to obviously hit the stone or the bead that you're working on. But that's just to work hard on it and make them absolutely strong and solid so they won't misshape. Now, to make the frame, working, um, get a bit of uh, 0.8 again, uh, 20 gauge, this is silver plated, cut a nice long length. I've probably cut you know, about 14, 15 inches there. And create a little hook with the tips of your round nose pliers. Now hook that into one of those links on the bead and just secure it so that it's completely secure around one of the links. Now, holding the bead to get it sort of held in your hand, you're going to be threading this long wire around the bead through the back or base hole and then back through the next hole of the, uh, the link at the other end. And you just keep bringing the wire around and around the bead, but make sure there's a gap. You don't want it to sit too close. You need a sort of it, it's very sort of like a halo, I suppose, around the bead. So it's like a frame, but leave this gap. Don't be too careful about what it looks like at this stage because you want this very organic look. And you can keep going for as long as you want, but I'm going to do just three um, surrounds on one side and two on the other. So it's just, um, I don't want it too over crazy because it's a lovely rose quartz bead. And secure it at the other end, cut off the excess and make sure that it's neatened at the end and there's no sort of sticky out wires. And now place it on your mat and with the tips of your chain nose pliers create little kinks or bends um, on these wires around the bead. Make sure that the wires don't go over the bead so you want this to stay on the outer edge and surround whatever bead or stone that you're framing. So just do that, uh, these little kinks, as much as you like until you're satisfied. I mean, each time you do this, each, you know, it'll look different because it's, it's meant to look organic. It's just meant to look as if it's sort of flowing around. And now you want to work harden the edges. So now be very careful not to hit one wire over the other. So just Take your hammer and place the edges of the wire on the block and just gently hammer the very, very edges or the, the sort of um, the kinks on that wire frame. You don't hammer the whole thing and you only hammer anything that juts out. And what that does is it spreads and flattens the wire and creates um, a sort of a hardening of the wire, but it also makes it look more interesting. And so just go around and wherever you can sort of pull up or get to, um, because you don't want to hammer one wire on top of another, because that will weaken it. So just pull them up and separate them and place them on the very, very edge of your block. And that way you'll get to, you know, these little curved and rounded edges of this frame. And keep doing that until you're satisfied that your, you know, the piece looks aesthetic and how you want it. And as I said, every time you do this, it will it will definitely look different. 
so I'm just rearranging another little kink there just to make it just a little bit more balanced as a frame and I can just get to the very very end of that loop and then when you're happy with that and you feel it's nice and sort of uh, strong and it's not going to misshape when worn all that's left really is a little bail and a jump ring um, and then you can put it on a chain so I'm going to make a jump ring although I do have a tutorial for jump rings which you curl a bit of wire around your round nose pliers keeping it on the same spot cut one of them the links off the coil and you've got your jump ring and then we're going to make a bail so with the rest of this wire um, and again you can make this bail bigger than I'm going to make it I've just got this little piece left and I may as well use it so fold the wire in half and then double up the wire completely so I'm squeezing it with my flat nose pliers to create the, the wire so that they run parallel and they're completely doubled so spend a bit of time getting it as straight as you can and then when you get to the other end if the wires as one wire is longer than the other just snip them off so that they're exactly the same length now take your round nose pliers and create a link in the doubled wire so you've got a doubled link there and then place the round nose pliers again next to that link and make another loop so you that's where the what the chain is going to go through or the cord is going to go through now with the ends just make a tiny little circle on each of those ends curling out away from each other and then make a tiny little spiral that will spiral up towards the loop that you've just made so starting on one side spiral around and around and then turn it over and then do the other side so you've got two little spirals and as i say if you use more wire you can get those spirals to be much larger and much more decorative now just place those spirals on the edge of your block don't hammer anything else but the edge of those spirals just to work hard on them and there is your lovely little bale that you can use for the top of your um, pendant so you're going to link that in to one of the the, uh, the sides of the stone oops <laughs> let's do that again so open up your your uh, jump ring sideways and place it into the top and then link that into the first doubled hook behind the spirals and then close that and make sure it's nice and secure and that it can't open up again and that gives you a nice little sort of decorative hanging bale to set off your framed gemstone and you will thread the chain or the cord or whatever you're going to hang it from into the other loop to create the necklace so here's one I made earlier and you can see how that hangs and um, you can then follow the tutorial on how to make a fish hook clasp and that will give a complete the end of the chain you could add another little bead there just to finish it off thank you for watching